He watches me walk all the way down, walk right past, like right, you know, kind of in his like side mirror, side mirror kind of, inside window, like right parallel to him basically. And then he just like, just pops his head out of the van. Suddenly it's just like, in Japanese, of course, he's like, uh, what is his first question? He's like, how long have you been in Japan? <laughs> Yo, ho, ho, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to episode 130 of the podcast. This is going to be a bit different than what we normally do. Probably you people on YouTube are going to be watching this first. Uh, things are just, you can tell them, it's daytime. You can probably tell from the background. Um, and things are going to be flowing a, a bit different than they normally do today. Sorry, I'm watching my dog. Uh, he's trying to find his little house because I got shit all over the place. <laughs> I got shit all over the place. I got my, you know, my laptop and, and, and all my equipment. I got equipment, you guys. Um, all my equipment. Out. I, I told you, every time I realize I got fucking equipment, I get like, whoa, this is shit's getting real. But anyway, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to go a little bit fast today. Uh, we're, and we're actually doing this in two parts, just scheduling wise. Uh, I was supposed to record the past couple of nights. Uh, I have some other things I, I have to get done. So I have like a sliver of, win of a window, um, not before I got to go pick up my son. And, and you know, it's just enough time for me to record, but not enough for me to do everything I want to talk about. And, you know, I want to take my time, uh, not rush everything. So I decided to do this in parts. So the first part, um, if everything goes according to plan, <laughs> I'm gonna um, record this, what I'm recording now, put it on YouTube first, uh, the audio, I'll just save it, then maybe tonight or tomorrow night, I wanna, I wanna have a drink, so maybe um, tonight, hmm, I think tonight, I don't know, tonight or tomorrow night, I'll figure it out, record again part two of this episode, then once I have both parts, I'll be able to put them together for the audio. And then part two of the video, I'll also be able to put on YouTube. So, so it's not like as much work for me, um, but you know, still I can still get get something out. Uh, so that's what's going on for you guys on YouTube. Uh, and yeah, I'll just figure it out. What's up with me? You can tell I'm a, a little bit flustered just because I just literally uh, got back in the house like a little while ago, like about yeah, uh, 45 minutes ago. Did some straightening up. Ate like random food you know just niblets of whatever i can get so um let me get into it let me just get into it right because I'm, I'm on the clock uh the, you know summer is here summer is here in japan it's real uh it's kind of hot not from like next week is going to get like normal typical summer weather uh you know 90 something 100 degrees in fahrenheit and you know 33 34 degrees in celsius really humid now it's bearable for me like i can deal with it but from next week it's, it's going to get real um besides that yeah i just have like i told you before like i have administrative stuff for my my company and some other you know i had to get some invoices out uh, for my private lessons and things like that so um you, you know like I, ha I had like a little bit of a pile of them not like not like a pile like i'm getting all this paper kind of pile but <laughs> <laughs> but I had like several of them that I had to make, you know, of course they're in Japanese. I have a template, but, uh, you know, you just gotta make sure everything's okay. And then email them to people and, and all this shit and make sure everything's all right. So, so, you know, in, in the cash, the bag is the priority. So that kind of pushed the podcast to the background. Plus I also have family and everything stuff. So, so, and I got my appointment for Friday, you know, for, um, my company's, uh, uh, tax filing, you know, annual tax filing. Uh, I use, you know, since my company ain't making no money <laughs> yet, my yet, my company's not making money yet. So, uh, I use the government, the tax, the public, they have in Japan, they have like a public tax official to help me out, like to walk you through everything. Once, once you do, uh, your, um, calculations on your own and you bring in copies of, of your paperwork, you can go to the tax office here 
and they'll help you fill out everything as long as you have like your, your documents your the forms that they send you and, and your names and your stamp and stuff like that they'll 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 walk you through everything but it is kind of nerve-wracking even me calling them is kind of nerve-wracking you know it's in japanese and and like the the ward office for individuals is a lot more relaxed you know because it's for individuals it's like private people um private people you, you know what i mean it's, it's for individuals so they're a little bit more loosey-goosey they're like oh hey come on in you know the customer service is a lot better but the one for companies you know for businesses is a lot more strict and rigid and um you know the the guys are there i mean thank goodness the guy i have the same guy this year who i had last year who was fucking amazing you know he, he was really nice uh and a shout out to you i'm not gonna say your name on here but shout out to you you did a fucking fantastic job and you know he just made me like the first dude i i uh, who helped me out the first couple of years he made me really really nervous you know and he was just like oh, fuck. like you could tell he was just like was not happy about his job and his life and he was just like fucking hell this goddamn foreign guy doesn't know what the fuck he's doing i gotta walk him through all this shit so he, he actually didn't really explain to me the proper way i was supposed to be doing stuff but this guy last year you know he was like okay this is a mistake you need to do this make sure it's properly i'll fix it for you um you know just make sure you know next time you, you put this here and put this here i need your name stamp you know any amendments have to be name stamped and stuff like that so it, it was done quite properly it's like you need to organize it like this so when you when you present it and stuff like that i was like oh thank you so much uh, so, you know, uh, you know, he was like, hey, did you make the changes that <laughs> when he remembered me? Because, you know, I'm like the only fucking black foreign dude with a company probably that, that comes in, asks them to help me file my taxes, you know. And so um, he was like, hey, I remember you. Did you do the shit that I told you to do last year? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know it's like a year ago I, I i i looking at like my original copies i think i did everything the way he told me to do it but it was a year ago so we'll find out on friday <laughs> we'll find out on friday hold on let me double check make sure it's recording still okay cool it is yeah so we'll find out um but yeah like again just just having a company anywhere but definitely having a company in japan uh if you don't have the money for an accountant, you know, is, is, is quite nerve wracking, you know, um, and, in getting accountants to file for your stuff, it, it, it costs a lot of money, money that, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I don't have right at this point. Um, don't, I say, I don't have to spare. Let me say it like that. Um, and you know, um, it, it, I'm just like literally just bootstrapping the fuck out of, you know, uh, grinding away at trying to build a business from, from scratch and, and figure out, how to do this shit in my industry like i honestly am like when i first i you heard me talk about it if you're a long time listener you heard me talk about it like i literally was so fucking naive when i <laughs> when i when i started like you know thinking i could just like start a company in japan and i was like i got an idea i'm gonna just do this and i'm gonna do this and i'm just gonna be balling in like a month they gonna just love it you know and um yeah it's yeah it didn't really work out as planned <laughs> but but you know it, it is it is like steps i see myself progressing i see you know the road ahead of me kind of unfolding slowly but surely in a you know <laughs> embarrassingly painful way filled with blunders and you know missteps but i'm like i was telling someone i'm falling forward every time like i'm you know i'm I don't think any, I'm not sure if anyone is, but definitely I'm not the type of person that um, does shit smoothly. You know, I don't like progress smoothly. It's very much a painful, awkward process. Anyone listening to this podcast, you can hear that awkward ass process from the beginning of me trying actually trying to do this podcast and, and like, you know, my audio issues like a year or two ago, um, you know, like, like it just, it, 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 it just, you know, I just, I just gotta fucking keep showing up. You know, that's, that's why I figure if I just keep showing up, it's going, it works itself out. And that, that's kind of how uh, I'm doing it. So yeah, it's embarrassing. Yeah, I'm probably gonna fuck it all. Uh, I might not even say probably, you know, there might be last year, we went really, really smooth. Let's say that. So, um, you know, it's, it's gonna be, you know, a bit uncomfortable at some points, but it's just like a bandaid, whoosh, rip the shit out right off. And then uh, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Don't don't feel bad for me. You know, um, 
you know, it's the real, it's the path I chose. It's the life I chose. It's the life I chose. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so let, let me get into some things. I have a funny story for you guys. A little, a little story um, that I was saving. I had to write a note in my um, episode notes because I wanted to tell you something that happened to me yesterday. Uh, so like I'm walking my dog, you know, my, my dog is over there sleeping. Yesterday, uh, like around dusk, you know, if you will, you know, you know, I'm, I'm a, it's a quiet stroll around in, through the neighborhood, and I'm just like, okay, you know, um, this is some Japan shit. You know, it, it feels kind of good to walk around my neighborhood, especially walking my dog. My dog's like my security guard. You know, people don't get nervous when they see me with my dog. They're like, oh, he's so cute, and you know, there's no real awkwardness, if you will. <laughs> but like. I mean, well, people in my neighborhood, they know who I am right now. But um, at this point, it's like, oh, there's the black guy who lives like somewhere over there. But anyway, <laughs> um, so like I'm walking my dog and and um, like I'm, I'm, I'm walking down the street with my dog. And he's like, you know, pissing on like a, a telephone, a power line, a power pole or a telephone pole. Um, I see this old dude, this old Japanese dude way like way down the street you know uh he's maybe like a good two three minute walk down the street like you know i can't, I can't make out his face he's that far down and he's just like standing there like he next to his little like mini work truck he's in like work clothes he's you know clearly a blue collar dude and he's just standing there with his arms like at his side like you know a superhero pose just staring at me i can see he's just staring at me you know <laughs> like not even like for a second like he's staring at me hard for like non-stop you know and my because my dog's like peeing so i'm stopped there you know he saw me walking around and we're going straight and my dog stopped and so i kind of looked down at my dog for a second and like okay let me give him a chance not to look i look up again just for a second and pretending I'm not to like really look at him like what are you looking at and he's just like non-stop staring at me grilling me you know and automatically you know like from being living in America my radar kind of goes up like is this guy gonna be a problem like what's going on you know it, it, if I'm in America I would definitely be on defense at that point you know and just because of the dynamics especially being a, a minority you know someone does that to me I'm like, are they going to try and do something to me? Like, what the fuck? Are they trying to call the police? They think, I'm, what's happening, you know? So I just kind of pretend like I don't see the guy, you know? And I start walking towards him and I get reasonably close to the guy and he just jumps in his van, right? <laughs> He just like, jumps in behind the wheel. And he's still just staring at me, right? Like, I'm not making eye contact with him constantly, but I just know he's locked eyes with me constantly. I'm just like, fucking hell. What the fuck is this guy going to do? You know, because uh, <laughs> he looks a little crazy. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. He looked a little bit eccentric. Um, so, like, he watches me walk all the way down walk right past like right you know kind of in his like side mirror side mirror kind of inside window like right parallel to him basically and then he just like just pops his head out of the van suddenly is just like in japanese of course he's like uh what is his first question he's like how long have you been in japan <laughs> just like so like you know i mean not aggressive actually just like and then i realized oh he just wanted to talk to me you know, like, then I was like, oh, I've been in Japan 16 years, kind of friendly. And he's like, oh, where are you from? You know, and it's like, he's just like, yeah, let's talk. You know, like, I'm like, oh, you can speak Japanese. Your Japanese is so good. <laughs> and he's like super pumped to talk to me. And, you know, I, and he's just like, where am I from? And how long have I been in Japan? And he's like, oh, you're married? He's like, yeah. He's like, oh, your wife is Japanese, right? I'm like, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, I got a kid too. He's like, oh, you got a kid? I was like, yeah. I thought like he saw me in the neighborhood before, so maybe he just had the opportunity to talk to me. It's like, oh, did you see us walking around here before? It's like, no, 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 I ain't never seen you before in my life. <laughs> it's like, he's like, oh, okay. He's just like, he became my little buddy, you know. He asked me like a couple more questions. He's like, oh, you know, he was just so happy um, to <laughs> to um, talk to me. It, it was just hilarious. Um, speaking of which, uh, and then you know. I said bye to him, and then he was like, bye. And then later he turned around to do something and came back down the street. He made a left, uh, turned the corner just before 
um, I where I was, I was walking down the street a bit further, but he stopped, paused his car a little bit. I looked back at him. I kind of waved at him. He was like, hey, hey, hey you know, <laughs> like so happy. Um, I, th I could tell I just made his day. He's going to go drinking and be like, hey, I met this like black American dude. And he's like, cool. He can speak Japanese. I know like that conversation is coming with whoever he hangs around. And, you know, it, 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 it reminded me as well, like about Japan, like that's Japan, you know, my preconceived notions about my life in America don't necessarily apply here, you know, and, and, and what I, you know, after he started talking to me, I realized instantly what, what the deal was. That guy was staring at me so hard because he was curious about me, you know, and, and, and he wanted to talk to me. He wanted to see where I was going. So he wanted to really talk to me. You know, and he's working out in his mind what's his strategy, like how he could actually talk to me. Does he speak English? Does he speak Japanese? Do I talk to him in English? Do I talk to him in Japanese? Wait, if I talk to him in English, I don't know any English. Fuck, what's the English word that I know? Think back to uh, junior high school when you studied English. Like, what is something you can say? Like, like he, I'm sure he was going through all the, oh shit, he's coming this way. I gotta get in my van. I gotta act natural. Like, you know, um, he was going through all those motions in his head until finally, you know, I walked past and then he just like blurted some shit out to me in Japanese. And that's the type of shit that happens in this country. So like, you know, like things that on the surface might seem quite upsetting, dangerous, whatever. Uh, in my experience, nine times out of 10, you know, it's just some Japanese shit, you know, and it might be people that don't know how to express themselves to you. They might not have experience speaking to foreign people or whatever, a lot of different reasons, a lot of different factors. And so I just encourage you to take those things into consideration if you have those kind of awkward, you know, like kind of because if I if I just seen him staring at me the whole time and went into defense mode and, and you know, start grilling him and be like, yo, what are you looking at? Or, or say something to him. His whole impression, you know, I'm a diplomat here. Like that might have been the first and only time in his life. It probably was the only time in his life that he actually spoke with a non-Japanese person, you know, and so I'm his first impression you know he might not have ever left japan and you know especially if you live outside of the cities and things like that i encourage you to take those things into consideration you know because i think that's the work you know of, of living here if you're committed to it you know if if if, if you really want to um, be a be a representative and, and actually push things forward in japan it is kind of your obligation to not fall back into your um kind of thought process your your set of you know what you th how you think the world works because there are people if you think about it this guy is also now that I'm talking about it and thinking about it he's also kind of breaking his image of how he thought the world works and you know it's like oh shit like wow he's a foreign person in Japan he can actually speak Japanese wow he can actually communicate with me wow he's a pretty nice dude and you never know where that would lead his conversation could lead to, you know, he talks to his coworker or his boss about something like that, a situation that he have, has. And then maybe in the future, when a foreign person comes in, maybe a black dude, maybe some uh, Brazilian or a Thai, whoever, I don't know, you know, comes into his company, they think back to that encounter with me because that's their only reference point of non-Japanese people. And hey, let me give this dude a shot. You know, and that's kind of the, the things that happen. The, the kind of ripple effect of things that happen here in Japan. That's how I think about things. And that's why I try and like give people the benefit of the, of the doubt and try and put my best foot forward. And my, my first reaction is to kind of fall back into like more of a passive mode here. I'm not saying that's what you have to do. I'm just telling you what I, what I do, you know, because my first initial reaction might be something that just completely fucks up like a whole bunch of other shit. So I kind of hesitate to react, you know, I more respond to things. I don't really react like the way, you know, in Western culture, we, you have to react in certain situations. So, um, yeah, yeah. In the West is a, a handicap, but it's kind of become my modus operandi here. So, um, that's that. Um, speaking of things, another thing, um, um, that point I bring up is kind of interesting because, um, I forgot to mention that bef it came out recently, the episode of ALT Insider, the ALT Insider podcast, uh, with James, great, great dude. I had a really good um, episode. I'm going to put the link in, excuse me, um, I'm going to put the link in somewhere in the, in the description of this, wherever you're hearing it or seeing it. And you can kind of go, 
um and check out his podcast as well check out the episode check out his his stuff and subscribe to him follow him what he does you know his stuff is i think a bit more alt heavy i haven't had a chance to uh, i only listened to that episode and i think one more episode of his podcast just to get a feel for what he does um but check it out. Uh, you know, uh, I, I listened to it again. I was kind of entertained by just our back and forth. Some of the questions he asked me, he asked me some good questions, some that threw me off. Uh, but I think, you know, that back and forth between us made for some pretty good content. So I think you'll enjoy that yourself. So that's that. Those are the two big things I wanted to talk about. We got I got like about five ten more minutes before i gotta pack up hurry up and pack all this shit up because there's no way in hell i'm leaving like a laptop mic in like um <laughs> a stand and all this shit when my like three-year-old son comes home from kindergarten that's not happening right <laughs> so all right so what i'm gonna do ah i got one more thing for you and i'm gonna leave the um the other stuff continuing from part two uh, sorry, the other stuff from the, the previous episode, I'm going to leave that for next time. I got a couple of videos that I want you to take a look at. I probably might watch them again just so that I can um, give you some stuff to talk about. And then the other um, Quora uh, questions from Rod that I'm going to uh, finish up that list really quickly. But <laughs> um, for so for my next project that I'm working on, my, my next uh, course that I'm working on, job, English study course that I'm working on, I've been doing, I'm, I'm trying to switch it up and do a little bit of, um, uh, just from feedback I've been getting from Japanese people, um, mix more entertainment in with it. Not like entertainment, entertainment, but make it a little bit more interesting, not just straightforward, dry kind of teaching. So I've been studying Japanese TV shows a bit. And there's one TV show that I found that I think is interesting. You know, I watched the whole thing um, and I think you might be interested in it before i forget let me just say i'm not telling you i'm not telling you what to do i'm not telling you to do anything that might be illegal okay i'm just saying if you i watched it i watched this show on uh netflix i guess it came on japanese tv several years ago about 2017 um you know, I watch it in all Japanese. If you wanted to watch this show, uh, you, if it, if I hypothetically were someone who might want to watch that show, I might want to Google watch adult high school Japan drama. I might just want to Google that and check some of the top searches for that. And I might hypothetically be able to find, uh, you know some sites that host that with english subtitles possibly i don't know but anyway <laughs> but anyway the show is otona koko and which means like adult high school and you know it has an interesting concept and um i'm just going to talk about that for a few minutes like and i found what I, I from another show that i watched a few weeks ago and this one i found a few tropes that i found in some some of these types of comedy raunchy kind of comedies if you will um I don't like the way they do it in this one, this one and a few other ones like on this level that are kind of on broadcast TV because they play it too safe. Like nothing really, like without spoiling anything, you know, they don't get deep into the raunchiness. You know, it's kind of like superficial raunchiness, you know, where like something always happens to trap up all the like things from getting like real, real, you know. So that, that was kind of like, it, was, it becomes predictable after a while. Like I can see where the censorship line is on these shows you know like they can talk about this type of stuff but they can't do like other stuff you know they gotta keep it like pg at least like P, you know below pg-13 pretty much they have to keep it below pg-13 um you know pg-13 is too much pretty pretty much so they can talk they can say naughty words but they can't like do naughty things it's kind of how it is you know and um but but it was an interesting concept so the concept of the show is um Basically, um, be, and what I found out from my research is, you know, in some of these type of raunchy TV shows, the tropes that I've noticed that happens over and over again, there's some research like this, you know, this is kind of a general pattern that I'm going to kind of use. There's some kind of research that goes on and there's some problem, some social problem or some problem in, in some organization, mainly a social problem that the government latches on to and does some drastic action to um to counteract that and then they do something crazy and then you know pull regular people in to 
um, some type of shit that happens. And then there's some uh, character who's kind of flawed in some kind of way who has some mostly a guy who has no it's also women too who's flawed on the surface they seem very collected or whatever they seem a certain way but inside there's this really intense manic internal dialogue that goes on and, and, and you know there's a few characters that that tropes that go along with it but um but yeah and so this this show really fits it. My, my wife was like, do not watch that bullshit around me. <laughs> you know, cause, but for me, just understanding, again, how Japanese companies, eh, not so much companies, but, um, you know, those type of characters think and, and, and how, um, you know, the media portrays those type of things and what is seen as entertaining here is interesting. So basically, the the, um, the premise of the show is um, because, you know, the Japan has one of the lowest uh, birth rates in the world the government sees that saw that problem and they said okay you know what we're gonna do we're going to kind of basically conscript people adults who are virgins you know who have no experience um having sex and we're gonna put them in this training program this otona adult high school basically adult school uh high school and make them wear uniforms and make them have teachers who talk to them who prepare them to have sex basically is is what it is right uh it sounds pretty raunchy if it were an american tv show you know you can imagine it would get pretty gritty but this is on japanese tv so they say sex and they say you know like it, you remember japanese people are very shy about this thing so to say a few of those kind of words or say things like like that those kind of topics openly is a really like taboo kind of thing so um you can tell they kind of pushed the envelope as much as they could but they kind of held, held back on the gas quite a bit in, in in some ways um i won't spoil anything if you do want to watch th that show um but you know i found it interesting but some ways frustrating because i kind of caught on to the tropes of the show so it became quite predictable and i and not so much frustrating because i just knew like okay definitely this is gonna happen definitely this is not gonna happen like i was kind of calling the shots if you will on the show um which i was pretty much right almost mostly all the damn time <laughs> so you know just getting towards the end i was just like rolling my eyes like okay i just want to finish this thing i got all the research i need like fucking hell <laughs> you know <laughs> so, but but uh, i think you know if you want some insight about um dating in japan and some of the issues and some of the the thought process of japanese people career japanese people who don't date or you know having trouble meeting people you'll kind of get some insight into that there so all right i'm right on time i got just a few minutes to pack everything up and um, get the fuck out of here um so that is part one of the episode i think i do i need to record an intro for this um no, I'm not going to record the intro for this one because I kind of explained what was going on at the beginning of this video. So after I record the second one, after part two, I can record the intro. So, all right, y'all. So let me get, let me hurry the fuck up and get the fuck out of here. I'll holler at you next time for episode 30, part two. Peace.